and Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Mark, glory to you, O Christ. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as king of kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. with you 
and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your son, our savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Let us read responsively from Psalm 31, responsively by half verse. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes consumed with, with sorrow, sorrow, and also, also my, my throat, throat and my belly. my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength my fails strength. me because of affliction. And my bones are I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, street they, they avoid, avoid me. me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as I'm useless, as useless as a broken, as a broken pot. pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their they heads, put their together, heads together, together, against together against me. They my, my, life. Life. my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, said you are my God. You are my, God. Uh, my times are in your hand. Rescue me, rescue me from the enemies, 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 enemies and from and those, those who persecute, who persecute me. me. Make your face to shine upon your servant. And in your loving kindness, loving kindness save, me. save me. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, he sat at a table. A woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. 
Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives and Jesus said to them, you will all become deserters for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go up before you to Galilee, Peter said to him, even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and he prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, you for you, all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you might not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough, the hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Let, get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. 
Immediately while he was still sleeping, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the 12, arrived. And with him, there was a crowd with clubs and swords from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I was with you in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests, the elders and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards warming, him, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him saying, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands. And in three days, I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, are you the Messiah, the son of the blessed one? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, why do we need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him and to strike him, saying to him, prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, you also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it saying, I do not know or understand what you were talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl on seeing him begin, began again to say to the bystanders, this man is one of them. But again, he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, certainly you are one of them for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you were talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed. The second time, then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, you say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply that Pilate was amazed. 
Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd and had them release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, and what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify, crucify him. him. Pilate asked them, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify, crucify him. him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with reeds, spat on him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his, divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each would, should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and asking, ah, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah and the King of Israel come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloa, Oa, Lima, Sabiktani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the satyrian who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was, the, was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, 
and Mary the mother of James the younger and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. So there's some part of me that would like to just go sit somewhere and be quiet now for the rest of the day and really ponder all of these words because just kind of walking through um, this whole scenario is no matter how many times I hear it, it is so moving and so striking to me and reminds me not to be too surprised about the things that go on in our world today, because here's just such a, 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 a commentary on the ways in which we conduct business, particularly thinking about the religious leaders that were taking the leadership in this dastardly act of killing Jesus. But what I, I want to do this morning for a few minutes is um, what I like to do with scripture, because I think we we read all these, these lovely, uh, words and we react to them in different ways, but it's a lot to take in. And so I want to ask you to, to think with me for a little bit, uh, to be imaginative. And one of the wonderful characteristics of God is that God has an amazing imagination. If you look at the world around you, you look at the creation, you look at the day-to-day -day recreation of the absolute majesty in this world, you can see what a great imagination God has. And I think that we don't get invited, particularly in the 21st century in the Western world, to use our imagination nearly enough to think about things. I think that's part of why we, uh, we end up with uh, so many conversations about insufficiency and uh, scarcity because we have such a lack of imagination. So I want to encourage you and invite you this morning for a little bit to be imaginative and to, to really uh, call upon the imaginative, the imagination part of yourself to reflect with me a little bit. And I want you to imagine, as I do often and talk about uh, just incessantly, that there's a whole little community living inside of you, a little, just a whole community. If you can think about the places, the neighborhoods you live in, that everything in your outer world, your outer community, that if you could just bring that inside. So there's a whole bunch of little energy systems running around inside of you, you know, the, and, you, and you can think about them as being the many different voices that you hear, being represented at least I should say, by the many different voices that you hear in your head around many different kinds of things. But just think about what are those voices and the, the conflicts and those struggles and all of that as being an internal community that's operating that is operating in full force. And if you haven't 
thought about this this way, it might sound really weird and crazy. If you've been thinking about it a lot, it'll you'll just fall right into it. If you've not been thinking about it, I would just invite you to consider that it's a possibility that there is this community. And, and then I want you to think about who are those people? Who do they represent? And there's all different, you know, there's a generous person we've got, but there's a stingy person inside of us because there's always opposites. And that's the part we don't talk about enough either, I don't think. That if you've got a, if you're a generous person, if you push that far enough, you'll get to the stingy person. You'll get to a, you'll get to a point. If you push generosity far enough down the road, you'll get to a point where there's something you don't want to give away. And then you have, you see the opposite. Then you see the stingy person. So if you have a generous person, think about your stingy person. If you have a compassionate person, think about the person in you that doesn't want to be compassionate because those opposites are there and they have to be dealt with. And part of our problem in the, <clears throat> excuse me, in the ways in which we conduct business with one another is that we don't give enough attention to these, to this dynamic period. So the part of the, the, the reading that I want to talk about now that I've got you thinking about who's in your inner community is uh, the part this from uh, verses 66 to 72. And I have a Bible that says, that has these little subtopic subheadings. And so this subheading of, in my Bible, I think it's New International. I never know what, what to see if that's, yeah says Peter disowns Jesus. So I want you to think with me this morning a little bit about who in this inner community has ever disowned Jesus or does disown Jesus. And what does disowning Jesus really look like for us in our inner communities and in our outer communities? And what does the process of disowning Jesus have to do with the ways in which we go about conducting business and how the world is running? Because uh, things don't just happen in vacuums, you know, things happen because they are given energy. And when the energy is withdrawn from them, they don't, it doesn't happen. You know, it's like a tire. You put air in it and you can drive on it. You let the air out and you can't drive on it. We energize systems, we energize things in us and we can, they have force, they stand up in the world, they do stuff. We take the energy out of those things and they don't work anymore. You know, so when you think about the world this way, it begins to make you see that there are some ways to deal with things that we often miss because we look at the big picture and we feel overwhelmed and our big, biggest response is we wanna crawl under the bed. And I know the phenomenon of, of wanting to crawl under the bed. I've had that I thought a few times myself, let me go here and wait for somebody to fix this mess. But if I think about who's inside of me and what energy am I putting out and how am I contributing to what is going on? Then I begin to have a sense of being empowered, a sense of agency, a sense of I can do something here. Here's poor Peter, poor Peter, poor us, poor Peter, poor us, because he wants to be braver than he is he hopes he's braver than he is. He thinks in his head that he would never do anything as horrible as deny Jesus, that he, the person he's been with for these years and he loves. We know that, we know that voice well. We know that voice that's so courageous when it's sitting in the house all by itself. We know that voice, we know that community member, we know that brave little energy that's gonna set them straight the next time. And then the next time comes and we hide in the corner. We retreat to silence. The next time somebody tells a racist joke in our presence, we don't say anything because it's our neighbor and we don't wanna rock the boat. And we just disowned Jesus. We disowned him because Jesus wants us to stand up. The next time somebody disparages the poor person on the bridge. The next time we pass by somebody who's begging, 
and don't give to them because we decided what they will do with the money and we want to be the judge of that. We just disowned Jesus. You see, it's not the big stuff sometimes that really hangs us up. It's, it's all those little days of little opportunities, those little ways in which we have missed standing up that we say, no, we don't know him. We don't know who he is. And that, that community member lives in us, in all of us, or else our world would be in better shape. So there is empirical evidence of the community member who disowns Jesus, the Christ, Jesus, the savior, Jesus, the human being, Jesus, our Lord. There is empirical data. All we have to do is look around us look around us at the brokenness, the sickness, the lack of wellness, the, the, the wounding, the hurt that's in our, in our world, in our United States of America and in the rest of the world. And it bears witness to our disowning him in so many ways. So on this Palm Sunday, when Jesus is riding into Jerusalem, one of the questions I have to ask myself is, is there any room in my inner community for Jesus to enter? Is there any room for Jesus to come into this little inner community of mine? And did I, do I really have a palm branch to lie down here, to lay down here on the ground and welcome him or not? And then I must answer the question for myself. I cannot answer it for you, you cannot answer it for me, you cannot answer it for the closest people in your life. It's only you can answer. Each person has to answer for himself or herself. And I do think, you know, I hope you hear these words as they are being given because this is my interrogation to myself every day. Little community member, where are you? Are you really ready to stand up here and be counted? Where, where is the energy that will help you to do that? I, I've been, the last few days I've been preoccupied and Lisa will know this because she heard me talk about it two times now. I've been preoccupied with the whole notion around courage and will because I think that the, so much could be solved in the world if we could get this little disowning part of ourselves intact, if we could in check, if we could get that little voice to get uh, inspired some kind of way. But you know, we can't just stand on the outside of people and wave a bunch of scriptures at them and say, go do this. We've been doing that for a whole bunch of years now and it's not working. People are being told, go, you know, go be loving, love your neighbor as yourself. What does that really mean? And who's really doing it? Forgive those who, try to abuse you or take from you. What does that really mean? And who's really doing it? And how do you do it? How do you forgive the person that you need to forgive? It's a process. There's something to be learned. There's something to be taught about all of this. And we have reduced it to magic and it's not magic. It's about intention, it's about knowledge, it's about transformation, it's about opening up our hearts and heads. It's about hearing the voice of God speaking to us. So courage is not something that you just go outside and pick off a tree. Courage is something that you find as you engage these voices inside of yourself, the, the conflicting voices, the voices that tell you, if you take that stand, you're gonna lose your job. And if you lose your job, you're gonna get home, be homeless the next thing you know. And you have to deal with that voice because nobody standing out there pointing to you to come and be courageous is gonna have any impact upon you because that voice is stronger than anything they could be saying. So how do we, how do we get ready for the resurrection? We listen to these voices and we engage them we talk to them, we remind them, we open ourselves back up to the great imagination, the great imaginator, the creator, 
who can give us strength and courage and more wisdom than we have ever imagined ourselves ha having. This is how we find courage. And then what does all that have to do with anything? I mean, when it's all said and done, what has this got to do with anything anyway? Well, there is this troublesome line in the prayer that Jesus taught us that says, your kingdom come. What does that mean? How do we help the kingdom to come? It can't come if we can't quit disowning the leader of it. It's got to have the assertion that this is the leader. Now you say, well, I've never disowned Jesus. I've always said I'm a Christian. That's not what I'm talking about. Of course you're a Christian and you don't quit being a Christian just because you disown Jesus. Peter didn't quit being a disciple just because he disowned Jesus. He just fell down on his face and, and fell short of what he could have been. And as long as we keep falling short of what we could be or what God wants us to be, we hinder the kingdom from coming. We hinder it, we're slowing it down. And Lord knows we've slowed it down. I have no idea, I don't expect it to be, you know, I don't even know exactly what that's all supposed to be. But what I do know is it's supposed to, it's not supposed to be a world where we keep on hurting each other and killing each other and refusing to give each other the space to become the people that God put us on the earth to be. I do know that God does not stand with that energy, that God does not stand with the lack of love, the lack of care, the lack of compassion. And it's up to me to be open to, to having healing internally so that I am ready to engage in helping to make healing possible in the world outside of me. May we find the will to want the kingdom to come. And when we find that will, then the systems that we have created to denigrate and to marginalize and to harm people and to put people in structures and categories won't make sense to us because internally we will have integrated the opposites. We will have integrated the compassionate person with the person who wants vengeance. We will have integrated the stingy person with the generous person. And there won't be conflict in our souls about that. And when we go out into the world, we will bring that energy with us. And it will make sense when we encounter how it's being woven together in the external world. May we all have the courage to be ready for the resurrection on Easter Sunday morning. God bless you. Amen. We're going to enter a, a time of prayer now. And as I said earlier, I'll invite you to um, put your prayer requests in the chat and we won't read those, but we'll just um, see them as I, as I go through um, offering some some prompts um, but feel free to put your prayers in um, whenever whenever you like and we'll just be in silence um, for these few minutes I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world for our presiding bishop Michael for our Bishop Susan, for Dr. Meeks, Bishop Robert, and all bishops for this gathering and for all ministers and people. I ask your prayers for peace for goodwill among nations and for the well being of all people. Pray for justice and peace.
I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found. I ask your prayers for Bill Conkling, for those lost in the shootings in Atlanta and Boulder and Virginia Beach, and for all the departed. Pray for those who have died. I invite your prayers of intercession or thanksgiving, anything that's in your heart. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the spirit and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of Christ is always with you. Also with you. I invite you to uh, unmute yourselves and offer a sign of peace for just a moment. Peace. Peace, peace, be peace, peace be with you, everybody. Peace be with you all. Peace. Peace be with you, everyone. Peace, peace, peace to everyone. Peace peace to you. And everyone. Peace. 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 Just a couple of announcements before we move into our. Um, Eucharist time. And, um, and as I said before, whether or not you have picked up some communion yesterday or are just receiving, uh, as we say, spiritually, I, I invite you to take part in, in this holy, these holy mysteries that, um, that connect us one to another. Um, whether we're in Atlanta or in Williamsburg or any of the other places where we may be, um, it's such a, a joy. And thank you so much. Catherine for that, um, for those powerful words and for being with us. As I said, um, we will have some conversation after the service. So I invite you to stick around for that. You can take a little um, coffee break and then we'll come back just a couple, couple minutes after we conclude. 
Thanks to all of our readers, um, storytellers. That was beautiful and powerful um, to, to hear that, that long story read um, by all of you and, and the earlier readings. And um, thanks to our musicians. And um, we'll hear at communion time, um, Melanie and Geneva have recorded a song and Phaedra um, recorded the a glory laud and honor and has a, another one at the end. So um, very grateful for that. Um, I'm going to um, put in the chat a uh, link to the um, to our schedule for Holy Week, uh, especially if you're um, visiting with us today, you are most welcome to join us for the rest of the of the week. Um, it's a hybrid Holy Week with some services uh, outdoors in person that you need to register for and um, several online. So um, be, we'll be uh, moving through the week in, in lots of different ways. Um, I'm just grateful for, uh, you know, I was counting up in windows, we're, we're probably up to almost 90 people um, here gathered together. Uh, so it's, it's really um, a blessing to be together in this way. Walk in love as Christ loves us and gives himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins, he was lifted high upon the cross that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for those who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for, for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, 
Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has Christ died. Has died. Christ, Christ has risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with Martin and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll take a few minute break, uh, come back in three or four minutes and uh, have some conversation with Dr. Meeks. Thank you. Thank you, I'll be right back. Great. Catherine Meeks is on, on here. Sorry, Jimmy.
Nice tie, Rob Bell. First tie in a long time. <laughs> really, even for work, huh? No, I'm, I'm not customer facing these days, so no ties. Lovely. Oh. But you did it for Jesus. I like that. I guess that's what I'm being right now. Um, Lisa, do we want to uh, record this conversation? Oh, thank you. I had been big. Uh, I was going to stop it, I think. Don't you? Or do you think I should keep it going? Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to stop it. Um, I had in 